What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you my grow out rack. We're going to go vertically oriented just for a moment here so I can show you the whole thing. The rack is six feet tall and about 40 inches wide. And as you can see, I've got four tanks on here, two 40 breeders on the middle levels and on the top and bottom, 20 longs. I wanted to make myself a larger space just for growing out fry, but I also wanted to incorporate in some way uh, a degree of plant filtration to reduce water changes. In order to actually impact the amount of water I have to change, it takes a lot of plants. So the idea here is that the top two tanks and the bottom two tanks are connected via a pump and an overflow system that will circulate water gradually from the lower tank to the top tank and expose it to a large root mass for those pothos plants. So let's focus in on those top two tanks and I'll show you how the system works. In the back right corner of the 40 breeder here, we have a powerhead pump with a sponge filter intake that pumps the water up this tube and then into the tank above it where the flow is then baffled by another sponge cover over the outlet. Then on the other side of the upper tank, I have a bulkhead overflow with a low profile strainer and that comes down another tube that takes the water back down into the tank that it originated from. You can see if we take a look at the top tank that there are a lot of plants here. Look at the size of this root mass. I've been running this system for about three months now, and so far I'd say it's working out pretty well for me. Earlier this year I raised a batch of German Blue Rams in a 40 breeder, and the amount of food I had to feed them to get them growing at a reasonable pace, I had to change water towards the end almost every day. And in comparison, in this system, they are in a little bit more water. This is probably 63 gallons total in the top two tanks. I'm still finding myself changing water much less often. Even though this is a larger batch of rams, I'm probably changing water every third day instead of every day. I should mention though that when I was changing water in the 40 breeder, I was doing 50 to 60% each time. And in this system, I'm still changing about 20 gallons, but that's only about a third of the total water volume. So I'm removing fewer nitrates per water change compared to what I was doing before, but I'm still able to keep them down at a slower water change schedule. So again, I think this is working. So let me tell you a little bit more about what's going on here. You can see I'm using a matten filter here as a tank divider so that I can have one thing going on on the left side, another on the right, and get a bit more productivity out of this tank space. Currently I have my most recent batch of rams growing out on the left and on the right I have some of the nicer looking adults from my previous batch that I'm currently letting pair up so I can breed them again. Up here in the top tank you can see another matten filter divider and I've got a couple of pots set up to let some pairs of rams start to spawn for me. There's really no reason not to do something in the top and the bottom tank even though they're meant for housing plants it's good tank space why not? In the lower 40 breeder, I've got some Corydoras on the left that are currently spawning for me, and on the right, I have some female Crebensis that I'm currently conditioning to spawn. In this very dark and spooky 20 long on the bottom, I have some Plecos that I'm in the middle of a long journey of growing up to a breedable size. Now these bottom two tanks, I kind of had to reverse the order. Now the top does overflow to the lower tank, but the bulk of the plant mass had to go on the 20 long below it. Now the only reason that I did that is that when it comes to siphoning out water for changes or any other general tank maintenance, it's a lot easier to not have the tank on the ground, so I chose to put the larger tank at a level that I could still work on. So if you happen to see the video I put out recently on my dwarf cichlid breeding tanks, this is basically the same principle, just at a larger scale. Some of this might be the same information, but let me tell you a few things that I learned and figured out along the way that helped make this system work effectively and hasn't so far put water on the floor. First of all, these power heads are pretty strong. The flow rate is about 240 gallons per hour, if I remember. And I did that because I wanted to make sure it would be strong enough to lift water up about two and a half feet to the tank above it. But I did end up putting a valve on the outflow tube so that I could limit the amount of water that actually flowed down the overflows. I do trust the overflows and the strainers that are attached to them, but just in case they do start to clog, I would much rather have a more gradual exchange of water between tanks so that I can react if it seems like it's going to overflow. Another very important thing is I have the end of the outflow tubes positioned so that they are above the water level, and that means that if the pump turns off, maybe I have a power outage or something, I don't have water siphoning back down into the lower tank and causing an overflow. All of the pumps are connected to Wi-Fi timers that I can turn off while I'm doing water changes. If I don't do that, and I pull water out of any of the top tanks, it just ends up lowering the water level in the tank below as water is continually pumped up, 
and then I have to separately fill those tanks back up at the end of a water change, and that's just a waste of time, so I turn those off. One more thing I had to consider when I was setting this up is that there is a pattern of water flow through a matten filter, and I had to match that to the inflow and outflow of water coming from my pumps. Let me show you what I mean. If you look at a matten filter, whichever direction water is flowing out through the PVC pipe, water is flowing back the other direction through the foam pad. I had to make sure when choosing the direction of these matten filters that the flow of water coming from a pump would be pushing water through the foam pad in the same direction as the matten filter itself. Otherwise the two water flows would kind of fight with each other and I wouldn't get efficient and consistent flow. The last thing I'll mention is that in order to maximize the amount of pothos plants I could fit into the top and bottom tanks, I ended up removing the back half of my glass lid and then I replaced it with a plexiglass panel of the same shape so that I could drill holes in it and fit more plants. So that's about it for this one. It's been a lot of fun to put this rack together. I kind of consider it my monument to the glory of fish keeping. I'm really excited to see how this works out long term. I've got a few species that are currently breeding in the house right now and some more videos that'll come out in the future and they're probably going to involve this. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.